and welcome back to my channel thrifty day on today's episode i'm going to show you how you can make this very simple upcycled children's book junk journal please do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't and let's get into it these are the supplies you'll need a paper cutter some scissors a crocodile i got mine from michael's an exacto knife rings for your journal washi tape grommets the children's book, and some heavy-duty cardstock. That's what I use, although you could use any paper you like. The first step is picking your book. I am choosing this particular children's book because I love the cover and because, as you can see, it was already kind of falling apart. I got it for 25 cents at a vintage bookstore, and now it is going to have new life as a journal. So the first thing you need to do is gently remove your pages. Mine actually came out very easily. Yours may take a little more time. So just do whatever you need to do to get it out as cleanly as possible. Then I use my X-Acto knife. You could use scissors or a razor blade and you cut along the board that makes up the cover of your book to remove what's left of the spine after removing your pages. If I didn't say it before, you will need to use a hardback book for this and you will need to repeat that process on both sides of the cover. Once the spine is completely removed and you're just left with the cover of the book, you can get started. This next step is completely optional. I only do it on the book covers that are not glossy, um, especially vintage books. I like to seal each side of the cover because you don't know how long it's um, been around. You don't want the cover to be compromised any further, especially if it's a vintage book. So I use Liquitex gloss varnish and I just do a thin coat, one thin coat on each side of the cover, front and back. So just repeat that process with both sides of your cover and allow it to completely dry before you move on to the next step. And like I said, this step is completely optional. So if you don't want to go out and buy varnish, you don't have to, especially if you're working with a newer book, I don't think it's necessary at all, but this was a vintage book. So I wanted to make sure that the cover was protected completely. So now that I've allowed my cover to completely dry on both sides, I can move on to the next step which is adding washi tape to the inside seam of the book. Now, again, this is a step that is optional. However, I think it adds a really pretty finished look to your journal. It's a very simple step. You just add washi tape half to the front and half to the back and make sure it's sealed. I use my bone folder to make sure it's nice and snug and then you trim the edges. I just think it looks nicer and it actually adds another layer to the cover of the journal. And since I'm a total washi tape hoarder, I like using it whenever I can. So once that step is done, you just need to set your cover aside because we're actually gonna work on the book pages now. This next step can be a little bit tricky based on whatever book you have chosen. Sometimes pages will come apart very simply and sometimes it's a process. This particular book was sewn in so I was able to use my X-Acto knife to kind of loosen the threads and then pull it apart. Um, the pages don't need to be perfect though because you're going to trim all that excess off so that the pages will fit into your journal anyway because you've removed the seam so they're already a little shorter than your book. So you don't need to worry if the pages aren't um, perfect on the edges. You're going to cut those edges off anyway. So now we're going to begin the process of trimming down those pages and so that they fit into your journal. And the way that I do that is I line up the page with the inside cover of the book and I make a tiny mark to use as a template. Now gather a group of those pages and you can use scissors. I use a paper cutter because I can't cut a straight line to save my life. And you just cut right along that little line that you just made. And so as soon as you have it all lined up, you just slice away and you have the perfect size pages to go in your journal. And now what I do is I will use one of those pages as a template for the rest of the pages. So the process is the same, you just repeat it, you leave a little mark, and then you're gonna use that mark as a guide to cut down your next group of pages. So as you can tell, the goal is to have the entire stack of book pages be the exact same size that will fit perfectly into the journal that you are making. And like I said, you can use a paper cutter or scissors, and once all your pages are the same size, you're done with that step. The next step is very similar. You're gonna cut the cardstock down to be the exact same size as those book pages that you just cut. 
So the easiest way to do this is to use your book pages as a template. I flip that cardstock over to the white side. I get one of the book pages and I place it down onto the cardstock and I make small lines to accommodate the size that I want to cut. These particular book pages are thin enough that I could actually fit two onto one piece of cardstock. So I went ahead and marked on the back side of that cardstock to cut two. So now you're just going to use your paper cutter or your scissors to cut right along those lines that you just marked from your pages that you used as a template. And yes, you will need to repeat this process with the entire stack of cardstock that you have. And I do like to add about 20 to 25 cardstock pages per journal. So now what you should have is a stack of cardstock pages, a stack of book page pages, and they should all be the same size. So now all you have to do is mix those pages in any way that you would like them to be arranged in your journal. I like to add four or five book pages and then four or five cardstock pages to keep the journal interesting and fun to journal in. But it's your journal, so you can do it however you want. You could even add notebook paper if you'd rather have um, an easier place or space to write for this journal. So once I've mixed all my pages together, as you can see, they're all the same size and they're all gonna fit perfectly into the journal cover that I have waiting for me. The next step will involve your crocodile, And like I said, I got mine at Michael's. I also believe they have them available on Amazon. So set your pages aside because you won't need those just yet because we're gonna work on the cover. So the easiest way to do this is to use a cutting board or a ruler to measure out where you want your holes to be. Now, they don't need to be perfect, but you do want them to be spread out enough that the pages will um, turn freely. So I usually do mine about an inch and a half from the top, an inch and a half from the bottom, and then right directly in the middle, wherever that is on the book that you've chosen. Now I use the largest setting on my crocodile, and I just go ahead and punch holes directly through the cover of the book. The Cropodile is great because it cuts through pretty heavy duty books. Once you complete this step, you should have three holes in the cover of your book. So the next step is to get the back cover of the book because you do want those holes to line up perfectly. Stack your book cover together and just use that front cover as a template. Put hole punches in the back cover and repeat the same process with your Cropodile. So now what we will need to do is repeat the same process of adding holes, but we need to add them to the pages and the cardstock. So the fastest way to do this is to use your cover again as a template, line up that page, and use it to put small marks where you wanna punch holes into your top page. Then I grab a rather large stack of pages because the crocodile actually can punch through several sheets at once. I keep the book pages and the journal pages in order so that they can just go right into the journal when I'm done punching the holes. I use a binder clip at the top to help hold the pages in place, and then I use my crocodile to punch three holes where I marked. Once you've completely punched the three holes in that first stack, you can take off the binder clip and set that stack aside so you can start on the next stack. And yep, you guessed it, you're just gonna repeat that same process until you've done all of the pages that you want to go into your journal. It sounds like a lot of work, but once you get the hang of it, it moves pretty quickly. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to chat with you and help troubleshoot if you are not figuring out the process. So once you reach the end of your stack, you can get all your pages together and set them aside. We're nearing the end of our tutorial, so hang in there. The next step includes getting three small eyelets. I got mine at Michael's. Um, I believe mine are about a quarter of an inch, but I will leave the exact size in the comments below. You're going to want to place those three eyelets into the holes that you punched using your crocodile. Then using the tip of the crocodile, you're gonna press down firmly and that will seal the eyelets into the cover of your book. I'm not sure if you can see there what it looks like in the back, but they're in there nice and secure. They won't be going anywhere. So we are on to our final step. You are going to get three rings and put them through all those holes that you just punched. I always start with the bottom hole on the journal. I place that um, ring right into that hole, and then I add the first stack of pages onto it. And then I add the other two rings right through the pages and the cover, 
and then I continue to add the rest of the pages onto my journal. Several of you have reached out about where to get bronze tone rings. I actually purchased them wholesale, so I have added a listing into my Etsy shop so you can purchase them there. I will link that listing below in the description. And that's it. Once you close up those rings, your journal is ready to go. These three ring journals are really perfect for people who are beginning the junk journal process. The pages are removable and you can even add additional pages, photos, or envelopes to really personalize your journal. If you are interested in junk journal layout inspiration, I do have a playlist here on YouTube. Please leave a comment and let me know if you plan on doing this tutorial and also tag me on Instagram or TikTok. I would love to see your creations. And please do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. I post twice a week. I have tutorials, layout inspiration, flip throughs. So there's a little bit for everyone. Thank you so much for following along. I hope you were inspired. I hope that you learned something new and I hope you have a great week. Bye.